Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today's guest teacher, Kelly Copeland Swisher, shares a message on developing good family relationships. Learn how to eliminate strife and receive God's grace to walk in love. Now here's Kelly. Hello, I'm Kelly Copeland Swisher and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm so honored to have been asked by my parents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, to do the broadcast for you the next two weeks. And just in seeking the Lord on what he wanted to say this week and next week, I was really impressed with talking about the family, about walking in love, about how to get out of situations that you find yourself in, whether they're the uh, making of someone else or your own mistakes, whatever. Family relationships are important, and so many people deal with that. I, I guess everybody at one time or another has dealt with some relationship that is trying to go awry or uh, have strife or distance between you and whether a spouse or child or parent or even friends, you know. Our, our friendships, our relationships, our circle of people God places around us are so important. And in these last days, in the days that we're living in right now, Satan has attacked the family. Satan has attacked relationships because, you know, and even in strong families of believers and Satan has a hard time getting them to make a bad confession or getting them to accept sickness or giving, getting them to accept poverty because we've learned so much in the Word of God about what God has for us that there's just some uh, potholes, so to speak, that we don't step into. But so many times the devil will come in and try to bring strife in between families or spouses or children or friends and he will get in that way because people are not as on guard for it as we should be. And in these last days, of, we are in days of heaven on earth we are about to step into. Um, the word of the Lord that, that he gave to my dad for the beginning of this year, a year of great grace. We're going to talk about that because there's some points in that prophecy that are very important for us to know. But there's just so many families and I'll just say in a situation, you know, I, I thought about calling this broadcast this week, Family Matters, but not like, because that's such a dual phrase. Of course, it used to be a TV show that we all used to watch a funny show, but family matters. Family matters. Fa things that involve your family, things that concern your family, but also family matters. It matters what happens in your home. Too many times, ministries, uh, they focus so much on uh, their ministry. I'm talking about ministers in particular. Focus so much on their ministry and what's going on that they even forget to focus on their family and make sure that Satan does not have a foothold in their family. You know, we're supposed to, as believers, be, be, have our eyes open to the wiles of the devil, to the tricks of the devil so that we can stand firm on the word against every device, against every strife, because strife, the word says, brings confusion and with it, it brings every evil work. So what better way for Satan to get into a family, get into a ministry, get into a, a life or, or to stop the plan of God coming to pass for you, what better way than to bring strife? So we're just going to catch him at it and we're going to put a stop to it because, you know, my mom, you know, my mom is a wise woman. Gloria Copeland is a wise, wise woman. She's a great mother. She is so, um, it, she is just who you see on TV. She's full of the word. You know what her response to, is going to be to something. She's going to walk in love. She's going to walk by the word. She is a word woman. But at the same time, she's not judgmental. 
She's not critical. She's just a great mother. And of course, this week is the week before Mother's Day. So I may mention her numerous times because she's such a great example, not only to me, but I know to you as well, if you're a mother too. She is full of wisdom. And one thing she said, uh, we were talking about uh, this one day and she said, well, you know, my grandmother always said, you can't unscramble eggs. And because, uh, you know, sometimes you get in a situation and your family is in a state and you just think there is no way to fix this. Maybe in your marriage, you're thinking there's no way God, even God can fix this one because so-and-so won't change. You know, it's usually so-and-so who won't change. It's usually not us that we think we won't change because usually we all think we're doing pretty good. Otherwise, we would change. But we always think so-and-so won't change. There's just no way to fix this situation. Or things have gone so far that we can't go back. But you know what? I want to tell you today that with Jesus, you can unscramble eggs. You can take what's broken and messy and you can present it to the Lord and he will make something amazing and wonderful and even better than you could have ever hoped out of it. And so that's what we're going to talk about this week. And then as we move into next week, we're going to really focus on walking in love. It's going to be the tutorial on how to walk in love because you can't, we're going to talk a lot of things this week about how to unscramble those eggs, how to get things back into the place where God wants you to be as an individual and as a family. But the next week is how to walk in love. You're not going to unscramble anything without walking in love. So all this week as I'm talking about the things that you have to position yourself, the mindset you have to have, the things in the Word that you need to see to get your situation set right, just remember that all of it hinges on walking in love. All of the whole, everything in the Word of God really hinges on walking in love. So you may think, well, I'm not really having a situation, so I don't know, does this week really apply to me? Well, it does. Let me tell you why. Because this has to do with every relationship, not just family. This, the things I'm going to tell you work. Also, when you hear what we say this week, you're going to be on the lookout to stop strife from happening in your life and not let a situation occur and blow up and become big. But also, there, look around. There are people all around you who are hurting. You may not know they're hurting. You may not know that they're having a family situation. But God knows. And He will use the Word in you and the love of God in you to help somebody. So I believe, you agree with me, I believe this week is going to help people you know, and the wonderful thing about love is, yes, it helps us that are digging into the Word and finding out about love, but you know who it also helps? It helps the people in our world that we come in contact when we know how to love. So this is going to help people beyond the listeners of this broadcast, and I'm believing for great miracles, so be in agreement with me on that. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We present ourselves, Father, to hear from you today. We present ourselves at the feet of your word, at the feet of your spirit to hear a word from you that will help us, that will set us in a good place, that will help the people we come in contact with, Lord. Father, we believe for a word that will be life-changing today and that will set us up for great harvest of family, great harvest of of prosperity, great harvest of life, of health. Father, we want to be effective for you. And we thank you that the word we receive in these next two weeks will set us up to be very effective ambassadors of your grace, ambassadors of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to start today um, by reading some of the prophecy that Dad gave this year about the year of great grace. 
And the, I'll probably mention this several times in the next couple of weeks because it, the Lord says some things here that should kind of engage our thinking, engage our direction, and set us off on a path for this next year that will uh, change our life. So, and of course, this word does not just apply to this year, but we receive it this year. Amen. The year of great grace. Stay where you are. Stay steady. You know, that has to do with the plan of God. We're going to talk about the plan of God because um, for you to receive what God has for you, you have to understand He has a plan and it is a good one. Your greatest blessing ever is at hand. No one can stop my plan for you. It's a blessed plan. Stay on my word. Stay strong in faith. Listen to this. Insist. Insist. Now that's, that's something that we do is you can, the Bible talks about hold fast to this or, um, and, and in this prophecy, it says insist that that's going to take some determination and some decision on your part. Insist on walking in my commandment of love. No devil, no government, no man can curse what I have blessed. Believe that, know that you belong to me, not the world. We will carry out the blessing plan together. I am teaching you grace. Say, thank you, Lord. I receive that right now. I receive not just grace from you, but I receive an understanding of grace because you're teaching me grace. Who better to learn grace from? Keep it on your mind throughout 2013 and beyond. Never let it go. The thing that I can do that is exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think is to make all grace abound toward you. And that's what is happening for you and for your country right now. Be blessed. Enjoy my grace. It's yours. He says, the thing I can do for you that's abundantly above all you can ask or think is to make all grace abound toward you. And that, he says, uh, the year of great grace. And I was praying about this and thinking about this recently. And I, I remembered when I was a kid and I was probably, I don't know, 12, maybe 13. And I was at uh, the Kenneth Hagin camp meeting with my parents. And of course, we've been there, you know, for years, every year, every summer. And, um, but this one year really stood out in my mind. And I met that year, um, not for the first time, but I, had, I saw Oral Roberts for the first time in a long time at that meeting. And, you know, I've met famous people. I've met preachers. I've met wonderful ministers of the gospel. But that day meeting him for me was so, I just, rem I just recall it so clearly how how in awe and how stunning the anointing was that was coming out of him, on him. And I remember he looked at me. We were in a back room with my parents and some other people. He looked at me, and he just said kind of out of the blue to me, not a trickle, not a stream, not a river, but a flood. And I, I mean, you can imagine a 12 year old kid could take that one way or the other, but it just so went into me and he preached on it later that year, but he had, he said that to me and he didn't really explain it <laughs> or anything, but I, he didn't need to. I know that that was a divine word that he spoke to me. And when he did, it just, it, it stuck with me. And the other day, I hadn't thought about it in a while, but the other day, um, I was listening to um, Dad minister about grace, and, that, and it hit me that that word was about today. Not a trickle of grace, not a stream of grace, not even a river of grace, which would be great, but a flood of grace. And it struck me that when the Lord said great grace, 
he didn't just mean uh, wonderful grace. Of course, grace is wonderful. He didn't just mean how great and powerful grace is, but he meant great grace. And I, I, the Lord brought that phrase from Brother Roberts back to my thinking, and, and I just I saw what was I saw what he was trying to say to me. You know, this year, I don't care what your situation looks like today. I, if you will receive this, now you can go along and keep living your life the way you want to, and and ha and keep your situation the way you want to, uh, if you want to. But I don't think you do. Some people have been believing for things for a long time to change, but the maybe small advances, but that big thing that you've been believing for has seemed like it's been stubborn to, to be fixed. Some people, their life is a mess and it's just all a mess. But when the Lord spoke that great grace, this is what I saw. I saw a landscape that looked one way Remember in the tsunamis that we've seen over the last few years, you could see the satellite picture of what it looked like before, and then afterwards, after a tsunami, what it looked like. And when that tsunami came, it changes everything. It doesn't even look like the same topography. In that year of great grace, I want you to begin to believe God for that great grace he said, keep your mind on it. He said, let me teach you about it. That great grace coming at your life, don't just expect one or two little things to change slowly over time. No, the year of great grace is not a trickle or a river or a, or a stream of it, but a flood of grace in your life. And what will happen? Just like a flood, everything changes. The whole landscape how your whole entire life looks today will change. If you think, well, I think my life is pretty great, wonderful. Imagine how much greater it will be by the end of this year if we receive these promises that God has given us, receive his word that he's given us. And of course he said, insist on walking in love. You're gonna have to position yourself to be overcome by that grace. Position yourself to receive what God wants to do in your life. And the entire situation, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how much you think this is a mess. This is a, I have scrambled my eggs so much that they can never be put back together. Well, the Lord can put it back together. He can. And... If you believe him for it, he not only can, he will. He wants to. He wants his plan for you to come to pass. He doesn't want you to be anything that this word says is not for you. He says healing is for you. He says prosperity is for you. He says peace is for you. But we have to receive it. You know, the word says that where sin abounds, you know, where sin is running rampant, where sin seems like it's winning, where sin and negative things seem like they have overtaken things, grace does much more abound. Grace, God, what is grace? You know, I've heard wonderful definitions of grace over the years. But let me just boil it down to this. Grace is God looking at you as though you were Jesus. My dad said one time, grace is God putting a measuring stick up to you and Jesus is the measuring stick and somehow you measure up. God did that for us. Jesus bought and paid the price for you and I to be righteous. Not just so-so righteous, not just okay, not just survive, but for you and I to have everything we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have been given everything, not only that, uh, everything you can imagine that Jesus deserves. What does Jesus deserve? He was sinless. He was uh, the Son of God and is the Son of God. 
he, he was good and kind enough to lay all that aside and come here and pay the price for all of us. He deserves everything. He deserves everything good that God has. Well, because of what he did, you and I, in God's eyes, you and I deserve that too. And we've got to get our own eyes adjusted to look through his vision, to look through God's word, to see ourselves and our situation through his word so that we can begin to expect all those good things, expect all that grace to come our way. And of course, part of receiving grace is giving grace because if you're not forgiving people and you're not giving grace, you're not going to receive grace. And it's not so much that God holds it back, it's that you won't receive it. You know, somehow when you give love, you expect love. When you give grace, you begin to expect grace. And so these are the things that we're going to talk about in this week and in next. And I want to just, with the time that we have left here, I want to just open the door to talk about the different steps of putting things back together, uh, receiving healing in relationships. The first one is acknowledge God. You're going to have to acknowledge Him as your source. You're going to have to acknowledge that He has a plan. Then you need to look at Jesus. You know, the Word tells us, consider Jesus. Look at Him. Watch Him. You know, um, Paul even said, how do we run our race with endurance? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. And we can look at how He did things. That's what we're going to do in the next few days. Look at how Jesus did things. Look at how He overcame things. Look at how He positioned Himself. And we're going to do that very thing. I want to, before we go, I want to read to you from Jeremiah 17. And the very first way we're going to acknowledge Jesus, the Lord is we are going to um, look at Him as our source. Even as we go through, is Jeremiah's right here. Even as we go through the Word this week, He is our source. He's my source for from where to go from step to step. It says, curse, this is Jeremiah 17, cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and who rely on human strength. People get in a situation and they just rely on their own strength and that's all they're going to have to get out of a situation. But when you trust in God, the grace, the life, the power of God is at your disposal and He is ready to fix things for you. So we're going to pick it up right here tomorrow um, with looking at God as our source and trusting Him and positioning ourselves to receive great grace. Amen. Don't go away. I'll be right back. While traveling down the road of life, we are all faced with decisions. Many of those decisions affect our destiny. Choosing to walk in love is the only way to stay on the right path. And walking in love is simply choosing God's way. Choosing kindness instead of gossip. Choosing unity in place of strife. Choosing forgiveness rather than bitterness. Love is a choice. A choice that directs you once it's made. The Love Never Fails package by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland provides the tools to empower your decision. Limitless Love Daily Devotional is a practical way to put God's Word on love in your heart so it's there when you need it. Love is the limitless resource of fuel for your faith. All of your relationships can be repaired and improved as you discover God's boundless love for you through the Building Relationships That Last Lifeline Kit. It contains video and written teachings for each day as well as uplifting music, scriptures on CD, and scripture cards for you and your family to study individually or together. You can have rich and rewarding relationships. You have reached your destination. Follow love's directions. It makes all the difference in life. Build relationships that last through the power of love. Order your copy of the Love Never Fails package for only $32.99 and save 20%. Go to kcm.org slash TV special. Call our toll-free number 1-800-600-7395 or write to us today. God's love knows no bounds. Insist on walking in His love. It will change your world. For an additional 10% off, order the Love Never Fails package online today. 
Our offer this week is the Love Never Fails package. So I don't care what you're facing, love never fails. And the more you learn to walk in love, then the more brightly the light of God will be able to shine in your thinking, bring understanding, and that light will begin to shine on your life and show you what to do and where to go. When you are walking in God's love, you are fully equipped to handle every situation, to know how to get through situations, to know how to have situations changed. My dad said, this is the year of great grace. And I know that we all want that, but he said, we must insist on walking in love. And so this package will help you walk in love, to stay steady in his word, to, you know, walking in love is something that you decide to do it. And the next thing you know, you have an opportunity not to. <laughs> and so the more you feed the word into your heart about it, the stronger your commitment will be, the stronger your uh, resistance towards strife will be. So we have the limitless love year devotion year long devotional this is a great way to put the word in daily on walking in love and you know it is okay to read ahead also we have your 10 day spiritual action plan for building relationships that last this is going to help you and we're talking a lot this week about relationships and and fixing them and not you fixing them, but the word and love fixing them and how to do that. So this will really help you. It'd be good to do this in your family, even if you weren't having issues. And certainly it would help y'all to stand against strife when it comes. I want to pray for you today. Father God, we just thank you for your word that we've heard today. We thank you for the word that you're going to continue to share in our heart regarding our life, regarding our family, regarding our situation, our relationships. I thank you, Lord, that every answer that we need is in your word and it's in walking in love. As we walk in love, every answer will come to us. And as we get into the word, Lord, it becomes easier and easier to walk in your spirit of love because you have put your love inside of us. And today, as we go through our day, we determine to walk in that love in Jesus' name. This Thursday starts our Canada meeting. Don't miss it. May the 9th through the 11th in Ontario, Canada. Steve and I were just there recently and stuff is going on in Canada. So join my mom and dad there for three days. I will see you again tomorrow, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in God's word and build your faith. This week's Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Receive God's great grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing.